JB and we keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones. Before we get into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and to share the news with someone today. Our decision to bring the ID to the station is a shining example of doing the right thing and deserves recognition. In a world where it is easy to overlook the importance of honesty and responsibility, our actions have set an inspiring standard for all of us. And I'd like to present to her, for her kindness, a brand new Samsung Galaxy cell phone for our act of kindness. Now on to the news. Twin brothers among four motorcyclists killed in three separate crashes in 24 hours. A motorcyclist succumbed to injuries he sustained in a crash on the Mount Olivet Main Road in northeast Manchester on Friday evening. The deceased has been identified as Jerome Cassie, 26, a landscaper and resident of Hanbury District, Kendall in the parish. A police report said at about 7.45 p.m., Cassie was driving a motorcycle from Spalding when upon reaching Mount Olivet, a Suzuki Jimny, which was driving in the opposite direction, failed to keep left and collided with Cassie's motorcycle, resulting in him being flung from the motorcycle. He was pronounced dead at hospital. Meanwhile, over in Barrytown, St. James, two brothers lost their lives in a devastating motorcycle crash on Saturday morning. Kenroy Miller, a 29-year-old laborer from Spot Valley, and his brother, 29-year-old Vinroy Miller, both succumbed to injuries sustained in the accident, which occurred around 12.50 a.m., According to initial reports, the brothers were driving separate motorcycles in opposite directions when they collided head-on. The impact left both men fatally injured. According to a source, they were not wearing protective gear and the motorcycles did not have headlamps. Counsel for the Rose Hall Division, Anthony Murray, responding to the tragic incident, observed that the Spot Valley Main Road is becoming a crash hotspot. The Baritone police are probing the cause of the crash. In St. Anne, a motorcyclist lost control of his vehicle which crashed on the Huntley Main Road in Brownstone Friday morning. It's reported that, at about 8.30, 20-year-old Kwame Howlett overtook a line of traffic and came upon a puddle of water. While trying to avoid the puddle, he lost control of the motorcycle and crashed into an Isuzu truck in the opposite direction and suffered multiple head injuries. Man shot dead in Falmouth. A man was shot and killed by unknown assailants in Falmouth, Trelawney on Thursday night. The deceased is yet to be identified. According to reports from the police, the man, who sports short dreadlocks, was clad in a pink sweater, blue jeans, shorts, and a pair of red and white slippers. Reports are that, at about 8.50 p.m., residents of Racecourse, Falmouth, heard loud explosions and summoned the police. Upon the arrival of the lawmen, the man was seen lying on a section of the roadway with what appeared to be a single gunshot wound. The body was transported to the hospital. The Falmouth police are investigating. Man dies after gun attack in Red Pond, Spanish Town. The police in St. Catherine are probing the murder of a man was gunned down in Red Pond District in Spanish Town on Friday. That is 46-year-old Anthony Breckenridge, otherwise called Big Dread, of Paisley Drive in the area. The police report that, at about 8.30 p.m., Breckenridge was walking along a roadway in the community when he was spawned upon and shot repeatedly in his upper body. The police were summoned and he was found face down in blood with gunshot wounds. He was assisted to the Spanish Town Hospital, where he subsequently succumbed to injuries received. An investigation has been undertaken by detectives assigned to the Spanish Town Criminal Investigation Branch. Shootout in Leesland, Spanish Town between security forces and gunmen. The Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, is probing a shooting incident involving members of the security forces and gunmen in Spanish Town on Friday night. The reported firefight occurred in the community of Leesland. It supported that, at about 10.15 p.m., the team went to the community in search of armed men. The security forces reportedly came under heavy gunfire upon entering the community. The fire was returned. A car was damaged in the incident. Suspect in hit and run of policeman in custody. The police say the suspect in the hit and run of a policeman in St. James is now in custody. 
The suspect was identified as Dylan Reed, otherwise known as Bulby or CJ, of Blackshop, Hamity Hall. He surrendered to the police earlier today in the presence of his attorney. The critically injured constable remains in hospital. The incident occurred sometime after 3 p.m. on Friday, when the constable assigned to the Granville Police Station in St. James was struck by the vehicle while in the Granville area. The constable was thrown over a nearby precipice, suffering multiple injuries. Head of the St. James Police, Superintendent Iron Samuel said. He said the driver fled the scene immediately after the collision. The police constable was rushed to hospital where he's currently receiving treatment. The vehicle, a white 2016 Toyota Pro Box, was discovered in Black Shop, Hamity Hall. The vehicle's owner was identified and investigations revealed that it was being driven by Reed at the time. Mackenzie denounced this Mandeville market shooting, promises to down security. Minister of Local Government Desmond McKenzie says measures will be put in place to ensure the safety of all who use the Bandeville Market following Friday's shooting, which left two people dead and five others injured. McKenzie gave the assurance in a media release on Friday in which he strongly denounced the shooting, saying, There is no justification for this disgraceful and savage act. He said the preliminary report state that shortly after 10 a.m., two men accessed the market from the back entrance and started shooting. He said users of the facility had to flee for their lives. It is not yet known who the shooters are or their motivation for their evil deeds, but I want to give encouragement to the police who have already secured the area and to urge them to do everything possible, as quickly as possible, to arrest the perpetrators and to place them before the courts, Mackenzie said. He said he has spoken with the mayor of Mandeville and vendors, shoppers and commuters can be assured that measures will be implemented to ensure their safety and peace of mind so that they can come out over this weekend and beyond to conduct their business. The shooting sent scores of people scampering for cover, as two gunmen opened fire in a crowd of people at about 10 a.m. at the side entrance of the market. One of the slain individuals has been identified as Donnett Merchant, otherwise called Melissa, a resident of Warwick District in Haysha, South Manchester. The other victim has so far only been identified by residents of Three Chains District by his alias Wetup. The mid-morning shooting which triggered chaos near the Mandeville Town Centre, increased to 4 to 1 the number of people murdered in Manchester since the start of the year. Mayor of Mandeville, Donovan Mitchell, described the incident as a sad day for Manchester. When I was advised of the shooting in the vicinity of the market, I was actually at a peace march with the principal from the Albion Primary School and students. He said, it is a sad day because, while we were on the other side of town speaking peace, something else was happening in the town of Mandeville. I just want to convey my sympathies to the family of the two victims, added the mayor. Mitchell, who visited the Mandeville Regional Hospital on Friday, said only one person remains hospitalized. Seven people got shot, two fatally, a young man from my division and a young woman from South Manchester. Two people were treated and sent home. Two others are doing diagnostic tests and one person still admitted, he said. He encouraged residents to assist the police investigation. Whatever you know, speak, because the next person might be you. The young lady was just in the market doing her own business. One of the gentlemen was across the road in a syrup shop buying something, so it could have been any one of us, he said. Mitchell said the Manchester police have made strides in solving most of the shooting incidents in the parish. I just want to say to the people of Manchester, in my dialogue with the police, things are not so bad in terms of a clear-up rate, because I was advised that about 82% of the shootings have been cleared up, but it is hard for the police to be everywhere, he said. JCF and the JDF launch joint initiative against gangs. The Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, and the Jamaica Defense Force, JDF, have launched an interagency operations forum aimed at combating the country's persistent gang problem. The National Assault on Gangs Initiative seeks to announce coordination between the nation's security forces in their efforts to dismantle criminal gangs that pose a threat to national security. Deputy Commissioner of Police Warren Clark was in charge of strategic operations emphasize the significance of the forum and the critical role it will play in targeting key figures in criminal gangs. It's important that we highlight a critical initiative that spans the spectrum of law enforcement in Jamaica as we continue the national assault on gangs, a coordinated effort that is central to our national security agenda. This assault on criminal networks is aimed at dismantling the gangs that threaten safety and viability of our communities. The Commissioner of Police, Dr. Kevin Blake, and the Chief of Defense Staff, Vice Admiral Deans Gorman, have jointly directed the launch of the Interagency Operations Forum.
forum co-chaired by Colonel Query of the Jamaican Defense Force and myself as we continue the work of degrading gangs in our country. This forum brings together leaders from the Jamaica Constabulary Force, the Jamaica Defense Force, including JCF branch and area commanders, JDF battalion commanders, and partners such as the Department of Corrections and the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency, serves as a coordinated hub for the strategic targeting of criminal elements. Commander of the Jamaica Regiment, Brigadier Mahatma Williams, has also been integral in the joint planning and execution of these operations ensuring collaboration between the police and military is seamless and effective. The public can expect high visibility of the security forces across communities island-wide, where joint teams of police and military officers are executing targeted operations based on intelligence, investigative findings, and operational expertise. We are focused on apprehending wanted and other individuals who are at the center of violent crimes. I can assure you this is already yielding positive results. As we intensify this national campaign against gangs, we seek the full cooperation and engagement of the public. Your trust and support are critical to the success of this mission. Together, we will make Jamaica safer, dismantling the criminal networks that hinder our development and the peace of our communities. We urge everyone to play their part. If you see something, say something. You can report gun and gunmen by calling Crime Stop at 311, Police Emergency at 119, the National Intelligence Bureau tip line at 811 or any police you trust. JBN will keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.